Hi guys. Hello everybody. Let me know if you can hear me. Uh, so this has been quite a journey. Uh, before we start with the live Q&A and with doing a little bit of a piece of what I think is safe and healthy, healthy traveling and how I'm doing it right now. And um, I would love to have just a check in with you guys. How are you doing? Give me like one or two words. How are you joining today? Uh, how are you feeling? And put it in the chat box. And for me, I just came back from lawyer thingy, you know, where you go to all these um, tribunal and migración for getting my my last piece of the residency for Panama. And then I was like, oh, God, we have to go back. We have to go back to the uh, to the live Q&A. So I just literally just arrived in the door and put on the um, put on the camera right here. So I'm a little bit sweaty still, but this is you get the real you get the real thing, guys. So. Let me know. Esther's feeling good. I'm good too. Come on. Guys, type one or two words. Okay, and while we're doing that, fatigue, tinnitus, tinnitus, ear infection. Great, Katie. Happy to hear you're feeling well. Hi, Mark. Hi, Nana, Esther. Who else is here? San, Tahara. Awesome, guys. So to get this started, what are we starting with? Um, first, yeah, let's start with the uh, with the travel thing. Are you interested in what I'm doing to several to travel health and safe? Let me know. Then I do the piece now. Yes, no, yes, no. Of course, Esther, love you. Thank you so much. Okay. By the way, is the sound and the connection good today? I know last time we were in a mountain village, so um, right now I'm traveling. I'm in the city. Um, Twight says it's yes. Okay, great. Awesome, guys. So first things first. Uh, you know I'm not a big supplement fan, but when it comes to traveling, I have three essentials. I'm not leaving the house with them. This is like they go in every little purse. I'm not having a purse. In a backpack. Um, and those are just as simple. Here are my drugs. This is all in portable form now. So this is vitamin C, acerola powder, basically. Just natural acerola powder. And I mix that everywhere. I can mix that in water. I mix that in um, smoothie, just any everywhere, um, about half a teaspoon. is 500 grams, the recommended doses of vitamin C, keeps you strong and healthy, no matter what virus you're encountering. Um, then, of course, you know this, guys. This is nothing new. Zinc, liquid zinc, I always have that even in the plane. I did a little Instagram post where I, where I showed how I'm putting the zinc into my mouth, and the, the person in front of me was like, what is she doing? You know, but I don't care. You know, I'm healthy. So, and then we have B12, super essential, guys. And the, if you think vitamin C is important for your immune system, think again. B12 is minimum as important for your immune system, especially the one that contains adenosyl and methylcobalamin. So get that one from Global Healing Center. It's clean. It's the best one. I'm using that myself. Recommended to clients. The best one. If you want to get any of those supplements, I have the as recommendations. So you get the right one um, in the shop. I don't own them. I don't sell them. Um, but I partner with those brands. And you can go to PeggySchirmer.com slash 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 shop. And then you find all, everything. Like all the supplements that I recommend. If you ever think about, oh... I want some Moringa or I want whatever you want. It's just, it's probably there already. <sighs> Excited. Okay, what else can we talk about um, traveling? So from my experience right now, I've been just traveling inside Panama, but of course the airport experience is very similar. And what I noticed, this is a good thing about the whole virus situation, is that it's so much cleaner. It's not stuffed and it's so much cleaner. People actually... Um, are aware of what the impact is from these, you know, when you go to the check-in and you have to take out your computer and put this all in these trays, which before didn't get, you know, um, uh, didn't get didn't get the spraying for antibacteria. It was just, it was so toxic. I was always like, oh, I don't want to put my stuff in there, you know, because I studied medicine. So I have this background, what germs are flourishing there. And now, you know, after every, uh, after every passenger, they ch -ch -ch, next, ch -ch. So that's a really cool thing. Also cool is that you don't get cramped in the airport. There's always space. Same in the in the in the plane. You know, nobody like straight next to you. So those are the good things. Of course, for the for the airlines, it's probably very challenging with the budget and stuff. But you know, I'm looking for the good stuff. So that's the good thing. 
Um, when it comes to traveling, one of the most important things that I notice, apart from, you know, my best friends, <laughs> is hydration. Hydration, hydration, hydration. You know, so if I'm already, you know, if I feel a little bit sensitive or I think like, oh, well, I really have to take care of my health, I'm just drinking all day long. You know, I'm drinking uh, lemon water, I'm drinking cucumber water, activated stuff. And here right now, it is so good. I made uh, with coconut water um, in the Nutribullet here, a blender with um, blueberries, cherries, all organic, and coconut water, and one banana. It was full when I left this morning the house. And uh, that's just super hydrating. You know, coconut water in general is the best thing you can do um, for your body. So those are things that I um, feel are very, very safe to travel with. Um, also, when it comes to food, you know, antibacterial stuff, ginger, like nuts, a turmeric, shots, you can even put them in a blender and then just drink the blended turmeric or ginger if you want the really, you know, really strong boost. Um, onions, garlic are really anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antiviral. Um, and in general, I would just focus on wherever you are, um, get it as fresh as possible. Don't, I'm not eating out in restaurants and order a salad because I don't know what they did in the kitchen there. When I order out in restaurants, I usually get cooked food, like hot cooked food. So I have less, um, you know, less to worry about if it's contaminated or stuff. And in general, I don't eat out often. Um, I ordered some vegan sushi on Sunday just because I'm in the city right now. And so I was like, oh, wow, you know, I don't have my trees, but I can get sushi delivered. And they had a vegan option, you know, without naughty stuff. So I was like, okay. So that's something um, I usually don't do that because often my food, you know, if I do it myself, it's more affordable and better quality. I know it's in there and often tastes better. So no reason. Um, yeah, so that's my safe and healthy travel. Let me know if you have any questions about that. And if not, we're going to jump into your questions. It's nice to see so many of you. Some are... Uh, either subscribers, like um, members from the Gut Feelings channel, like San, Jill, Esther, and some are from the Gut Feed Academy. Gut Feed Academy students like Katie is here, Marilyn. No, Marilyn is not here. Yeah, so that's awesome to see, guys. So anything else about uh, traveling? Let me know. Traveling, safe, healthy, questions about that. If not, we're going to come exactly to your to your questions. Let me know. I'm having a zip. Advertisement time. Sorry. No, it's fine. We need my teeth. Okay. Okay, guys. So before we come to the question, if you don't have anything else about, you know, how healthy and safe traveling, which I'm... Happy to respond to because I'm right now in this tiny, tiny apartment, you know, everything together. So I have the kitchen. Here's the bathroom. Oh, I can't. There's the bathroom, a door. You can't see that. Fridge, freezer, indoor. There's the cooking thing. And there's my bed. And there's a tree. Look at this in the city. One million people city. Panama City. Okay. Good. Um, so, guys, if you haven't checked it out, advertisement slot if you haven't checked out my free gut healing training you want to do this because first of all it's free and second of all i'm sharing stuff that i've never shared anywhere else before especially not on youtube and i'm sharing about my healing journey so it's not like how to get rid of gastritis is more like a broad um, overview what helped me and what helped my 300 plus one-on-one -on -one clients that I work with and now with the Gut Feed Academy. The, all the, the gold nuggets that I really learned there, I put in that class. So I'm, And uh, I think if you're somebody who's like thinking you're alone, you know, you're the only person struggling with this or you're doubting yourself, um, you know, am I doing the right thing? I should be better by now. It's probably my fault. Or... If you are, you know, suffering for a long, long time and you don't don't believe anymore that you can heal, you know, you even, yeah, you sometimes just feel like giving up, then this will be the right thing for you to join. And how to join it is just, I, I put a link down in the description. Um, look for masterclass or gut healing training. You can go straight to my website, PeggyShirmer.com, or click the link in the video. And then you can re get registered. It's for free. Join it for one hour just with yourself, so really block out that time 
And I think you're going to get so much value out of that. Okay. Oh, there is a question when traveling. Thank you, Dwight Paulus. Do you wipe things down that you contact when traveling? Example, seats, hotel room. I don't because um, honestly, I mean, there is germs everywhere. You know, even if we can't see them, especially not me because I'm half blind, um, there's everywhere. I just know it. So, and there are good germs as well. This is why this whole disinfecting of your hands, of our hands, is actually counterproductive, you know, unless you would lick the hands all the time because you just disturb the natural bacteria balance of your, you know, of your skin, the protection layer, first one. So no, I don't do this. Also, when you breathe in all these disinfectants, it's actually really toxic. Um, so I keep all this disinfecting to the mineral. I have I ha to the mineral. I have a little bit of an alcohol, just 98% alcohol spray that I would that for example, there's an air condition here. I sprayed it on this one just because I touch this all the time. And when I go to bed, you know, I touch it before. And then, of course, you know, in the bed, you know, I put my hands everywhere. So this is one thing, but I don't you know, not everywhere. And I'm just aware. I feel like awareness helps. And then when you come with all these, you know, it's very hard. Like no virus likes this. They are kind of, oh, no, I'm not going to go to Peggy. You know, Bleh. she's not fun. You know, they'd rather go to my neighbor who just ate for McDonald's and now is licking his hands. I don't know if that makes sense. Probably sounds weird. Okay. Good, guys. So let's jump into your questions. Welcome, everybody. We have 40 people watching right now live, maybe a few more coming on. So that's a good number because then you're very, um, we might be very likely answering your question. I do my best. And I'm going to open a new window so I can copy paste them. Give me a second. Again, uh, for the questions, start your question with three question marks if this is your first time. And um, so I know, you know, with all the, uh, all the other stuff going on in the chat that this is a question that you want to have answered. So three question marks in the beginning, and then we're good to go. If you feel like it's going to the end you know, of the live stream and you still haven't got your question answered, it's really important to you, use the super chat button. You know, this gives for a small donation, you pop up on the screen and it makes it much more likely that I can see you, that you're popping up. That's a legit way of standing out. Also legit is to be a gut feelings member like Esther or San, who are green. You know, they also have, um, the better chance to get the question answered. And if you are using any kinds of, you know, crazy emojis, I'm just going to throw you out because that's not fair. If you 20 roses just to make your question pop out, not cool, not cool. Okay, guys, that was my speech before. And if you haven't checked out the gut healing training, the masterclass, do that straight after the, uh, the live Q&A. Okay, let's start here. Tara. Can we copy this? Give me one second. Okay. So Tara asks, first one to ask a question. One minute early. Perfect. Hi, Peggy. Lemon water is making my teeth sensitive. Is there a solution to this problem? Yes. So that's something that happens often. I actually have a video on sensitive teeth that you definitely want to watch, Tara. So I'm just going to forward you to that one. Um, Look for, you know, go on YouTube, search gut feelings, sensitive teeth. And I have an in-depth video where I walk you through the different steps of what you can do to get your teeth less sensitive. Um, from, you know, using a straw or not drinking lemon water, drink coconut water instead, you know, less acidity. To taking care of your, your stomach acid, do you have less sensitive teeth because of the acid reflux? So make sure you check that out. Okay. Sen, just commenting on, uh, I think you followed up with me from last live Q&A. So Sen, last live Q&A had a question because he's having um, a dentist, a wisdom teeth removal. And last live Q&A, he asked uh, if, she, if he should take the antibiotics that the dentist described. And I told him, hey, I can't say anything about this. I'll just, um, you know, it's not, from my point of view, it's not cool to, you know, just because you get the um, teeth operation, immediately antibiotics, that's not a cool thing. So rather choosing a different dentist or talking with the dentist that there are other ways. And he agreed with the healthy lifestyle and he doesn't need to take them with in accordance with his dentist. Success. I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, Seth. Okay, Katie. Katie. Hi, Peggy. 
I make my own mouthwash, a lot of our dent, dental stuff today. Let's see. I make my own mouthwash and one of the ingredients is xylitol. The package says it's made from birch tree, still a sugar alcohol and should be omitted or okay since from birch tree. So xylitol, there's an interesting one. So um, the good thing about the mouthwash is, Katie, that you probably don't eat the xylitol, right? I do not recommend um, any of those zero sugar um, alcohol forms, like xylitol, for example, maltitol, worse um, to take internally. But as a mouthwash, totally okay. Totally okay. Um, it's a sugar alcohol, but, you know, it, it's so minimal, um, the, the alcohol, and, it, you know, you have it in your mouth, but you don't swallow it, so I wouldn't worry about it. Um, of course, without the xylitol would be better, but it makes it a bit sweeter, a bit nicer to do this stuff. So they put it in and it's not, it's not toxic. No? Okay, let me know if that helps. Next one, Jill. Jill, let me copy paste your question. So why the reason why I'm copy pasting this, guys, is because I put it in the description then um, under the video once we're finished. So the next next person who watches the live Q&A as a replay can check, you know, oh, what questions that got answered. Um, Jill, could you please talk about what exactly to do to heal severe animal allergies? I really dream to get a dog again. Oh, I can relate to that one. I always wanted a cat, but I couldn't because I had cat hair allergy like crazy. Following medi medical medium, taking nettle, B12, zinc, and lemon balm. Okay, cool. So, uh, Jill, this is already good stuff you're doing. You're doing zinc, you're doing B12. You're not doing vitamin C, you want to do vitamin C. Because vitamin C helps the, um, you know, the sinus when you have the uh, often congestion. It, it might be the case for you. I know it was the case for me. I got also congested sinus, all this itching. That one will help to um, minimize that and also will help immune response. So your histamine um, doesn't get so much triggered because it's, it's a histamine cascade. You know, it's basically the, the, um, the substance that get released from cells that are called mast cells in order to start the whole um, inflammation reaction. But that's what basically what it is. Allergies are just an inflammation reaction from the body. Um, so vitamin C in whatever form you want helps. You also want to make sure at least 10 drops sink for you, you know, special case. Uh, B12, you got that one knocked down one to two times, the full dropper full, nettle. So I don't know, Jill, where you live. Um, for some people, right now it's nettle season. I know in Europe it's still a nettle season. Uh, October is nettle season. Maybe in, in the U.S. it's still as well. Get fresh nettles. Do like nettle soup, nettle pesto, nettle powder, nettle everything, everywhere nettle. You can't, like on nettle, you don't want, you want to go crazy. You don't want to do like one teaspoon of nettle powder. You want to do one tablespoon of nettle powder three times per day. That would be a cool thing because nettle is going to be a game changer for you. Uh, following medical medium, doing the celery juice in the morning. And then it's really about time, you know, because the whole allergy thing is a liver issue. So it's all about, you know, you keeping consistent. And then the great thing is you get a reward, you know, like you might already start when you meet a dog again on the street or your best friend has one that you have less reaction because that's, that's how it happened for me. It wasn't an, oh, sorry. Um, that's how it was for me. It wasn't an overnight, you know, oh, I'll just do everything. And then one week later, cat or dog, let's cuddle. Definitely not. It's a, um, it's a, it's a, it's a journey. And what also will happen is that at some days you might be able to tolerate more dog hair and some, some days less, especially as a woman, because we have this cycle, um, even, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're still in your menstruation time or menopause time, it doesn't matter, there's still this cycle going on. And um, for the body, it's a whole, it's a big task, especially for the immune system. So don't be worried that if sometimes you feel, you know, have less, um, less reactions and then the next time, although you're doing everything right, that's just normal that you have more reaction, um, even if you're on your healing path. Totally normal, just keep moving forward and go crazy on the nettles. Okay, let me know if that helped. I hope it did, Jill. Tara, just a quick question. Hi, Peggy, are the supplements in your shop available in the UK? Some of them are. So the brand, for example, the uh, Global Healing Center delivers to the UK 
and also good state delivers to UK. And I always recommend, you know, if you can, don't order it on Amazon. If they have, first of all, because you support that company, you know, they get more money for their hard work than if you would order it over Amazon, because Amazon always takes a card and you get the best, you you get the best, um, you know, you you know, you get the right supplement. And for example, with um, with Global Healing Center, this is why I love them so much. They pack everything ecological. The, no plastic. It's all wrapped, you know, in paper and it's really, it's just a different experience. You know, I really love that. So, and they both deliver to the UK. So, and then for some, you know, for some of the things they don't, you know, for the, uh, for some of the Amazon links, they do not work for the UK. In the past, I had three different shops, but as Amazon changed things, it's not possible anymore. So I'm right now, I'm just delivering most of them or like recommending them most of them for the US and some brands like Global Healing Center and Good State, they also deliver anywhere in the world. Okay. Apart from Canada, Canada is a bit weird with their with their regular regular reglementations at the moment. I hope they're gonna change that soon. Okay, Maria. Maria Aguera Barrio. What a beautiful name. Hi Peggy, I can't breathe well. My nostrils are always swollen. So I can breathe around 30% of full capacity, but I don't have sinus, no pain. Any advice, please? Well, if your nostrils are, are swollen, then you have a sinus issue. That's for one thing. You don't have to have like pain or anything like that. If they're swollen, and by, by the way, this this part is this part here is called the sinus. So if you say you don't have a sinus, I would worry about that. So you definitely have a sinus. What you're saying is you don't have a sinus issue. I tell you, you have a sinus issue. Because if not, you would breathe through your nostrils unless you have a polyp in both nostrils, which you know blocks the the passage. But um, that would have probably been found out earlier by doctors, you know, especially in your childhood and things like that. Um, and also polyps often um, develop when there is a viral issue underlying. That's another thing to keep in mind. For that one, for getting help with that, I definitely have advice. Colloidal silver is one, zinc is the other, nettles is another one. And I have a video. I think I have three videos. If you just um, Google uh, YouTube, <laughs> gut feelings, sinus, at least three, two or three videos should show up. And yes, you want to do that. You want to do what I say in there. Um, you want to look into your lymphatic system or like look that you support the lymphatic system a lot because that's, you know, it's all hydration in here as well, um, which will make it more easy for the, for the toxins to be transported out. Okay, hope that helps, Maria. Mark, Mark, long time no see. Peggy, what foods would you recommend for joint health? That's a great question. So joint health um, can have two, two causes. One of them is just, you know, like use, too much use, age. Um, but then again, you know, age just often as, as um, in the medical community, we say it's age. But what really happens is a lot of, you know, chronic health issues before and then you age faster. So joint is really also a viral issue. Viral liver, want to focus on that. Uh, foods, foods, anything that's anti-inflammatory really. You can have different issues with your joints. Um, let me think about it. Zinc, I would definitely do zinc. I would do, um, I would do a lot of ginger, especially if you have pain and also if it's swollen because that helps to decongest and, um, to um, you know, create a better circulation that will help. Um, so yeah, those are things that that uh, I would do. And just in general, do the stuff we're doing on the gut feelings channel. And you you are good to take care of your of your joints as well. I wouldn't go crazy on the supplements, you know, collagen and all this stuff that they are recommending. Um, yes, so that's my that's my overall um, overall piece to that one. Let me see. I have copy paste this one. Okay. Let me see. Remember, guys, if you have a question, put those three question marks before it. Okay. Let me just scroll. Okay. Matt. Matt, let me just copy paste your question and then I read it. Matt, how do you, Peggy, 
I mean, Peggy, how do you feel about introducing fish to a vegan diet? Is it a terrible? Is it as terrible for you as other animal proteins? Um, ha. Well, I mean, that's a difficult question. So first of all, I want to I want to really make sure that I'm not, you know, I don't want to judge anybody who wants to eat meat. You know, I personally do not eat meat. Um, for several reasons for my health, but also just because I don't like to eat my friends. You know, I feel, I'm very sensitive. I love animals. Um, I think we really, really don't have respect for those like sensitive beings, especially like pigs and cows. And I just see them and I want to hug them. You know, that's me. And, you know, be in the mud. And so, uh, and fish, you know, like there's so much, there's so much pollution, you know, first things you eat, the, you eat the toxic heavy metals. Um, so with the fish, it really depends on where it's coming from, um, rather Atlantic than Pacific, um, rather, you know, like rather organic or wild caught um, than, you know, conventional. It's also about the impact it has on the environment, you know, like how they treat the, uh, with those uh, big nets where they take the whole floor of the ocean, basically, you know, and we, we just, you know, I want to do everything to support, you know, the natural ecosystem and not, you know, dig into that. But that's my personal opinion. From a health perspective, I would not recommend fish more than, than anything else. Um, just because it's high fat, it's high protein. Most people have issues with breaking down protein and fat especially comes from animals because we have such a weak digestive system. We don't have the bacteria for it. Um, we have a lot going on in our body. The liver needs more support. The liver needs more green juice. They don't need more animal protein or eat an avocado if you need something fatty. If, you know, you want to eat some fish here and there, do it. You know, if you feel that's the better alternative um, than animal protein, what I would not recommend at all is pork. For example, just because their DNA is so similar to ours, they're so sensitive and um, yeah, and often you know the antibiotics and stuff. So yeah, make it make a make an empowered choice with the fish. You know, know where it's coming from. Um, nothing around India or China or any really any hubs where there's a lot of pollution. You're gonna eat it. You're gonna eat it, even if it's organic. You know, I go to the organic store and I always ask me, where do you get the fish from? You know, or I look at the, the packages if I, you know, cook for somebody else or things like that. So you want to make sure that, you know, where this is coming from and you have a good quality product. And it's very rare. It's very rare to find good fish. Okay. Let me know if that helped Matt. Matt Marine Ciappelli. Sounds Italian. Okay. Uh, Selena Leslie. How can I overcome lazy colon? My doctor recommended laxatives and now it got worse. I'm uh, sure it got worse. Because laxatives are like a credit card. Uh, Selena, let me copy your pest, your pest, your question. Okay. Yeah, so lazy colon. Already that name gets me, you know, up on the tree. Because it's not lazy colon, it's just an injure, injured colon. Would, would work better, better, better. And um, so lazy colon um, has to do with the peristaltic in your, in your, a digestive system. So what you want to do, um, Selena, you want to get B12 and you want to go nuts on it. So I'm talking about one, one in the morning and afternoon the same, because this one is important for your nervous system. Now your nervous system, there's so many nerves in the gut. Um, so and for your nervous system, you for the peristaltic in your gut, you need your nerves. This is why it's not working. So you need your nervous system to be on top notch and to support that, you need the adenosyl cobalamin, um, the special form of B12 that is in that. Um, so that's one thing. You want to eat low fat, low protein, like crazy. You want to make sure that um, you understand that when you take laxatives, it actually damages your body more because it depletes you from minerals. It um, it forces the body to do something that it would not naturally do. And it's basic it's living of a credit card because you pay that back. So everybody who stops taking laxatives gets crazily constipated because the body's like, oh, you know, I just adjusted to this and now you stop this. So um, that's something you want to, sorry, that definitely want to keep in mind. You don't need laxatives to heal, you know, lazy colon or, you know, like gut motility issues. Um, so unless, an injury is another one for medications, from plastics, from toxins from antibiotics um, that often also occurs with 
lazy colon. So go nuts on the gray, green juice, bring in the, uh, the B12, super important, and coconut water. Um, Selena would be amazing for you as well because it contains potassium. Potassium is an important electrolyte for the peristaltic um, to get that working again. In the morning, you can even, you know, if you don't can't do celery juice, drink 16 ounces of coconut water in the morning, 100% coconut water. That will be a good, a good move to start with. Okay, hope that helped. Okay. So many more questions. Guys, you gotta come in early. You know, the way to get your questions better answered is to be on time. I, I, I ran here from the car upstairs, you know, like I made everything happen to be here. Um, so guys, come earlier, then you have better chance to, to get your question answered because now it's crowded again. In the beginning it was, you know, light and easy to see. Just letting you know. I know you have a busy life too, guys. <laughs> okay, now um, before we come to the next one, if you haven't, I'm doing my advertisement slot again. Duh, 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 duh. Next time we might have a screen, you know, where I can share my screen. I haven't figured this tech stuff out yet. Um, where I can show you, you know, how you can sign up for the gut feeling training, uh, gut healing training, the masterclass, which is about one hour long and it's for free. And uh, where you can learn the three keys. I, I put so much love and effort, you know, weeks of effort into this class. Um, and you can, you know, join for free. So there's really no risk for you. Where I share about my personal healing journey and what helped me. And also uh, some of my clients, what they did, what tripped them up. So if you're judging yourself or you think like you can't get better no matter what you do, you feel alone, you feel like you're suffering for so long and you've been trying everything, then you want to watch that class. It's not about healing gastritis or just one thing. It's more like a broad, uh, giving you a broad um, image in how healing really happens, you know, and kind of putting the mind straight in what to expect on the healing journey. Because we are so brainwashed with the whole take a, take a pill, you know, and get rid of your lazy colon kind of thing. That's what everybody tells us. But that's not that's not healing. So if you want to learn more about that, go to the, the gut healing training. And the way to get there is either go straight on my website, PeggyShirmer.com, and there's a button on that homepage, or you click down below in the description. Next one. Let's have a few more. Shireen, Peggy, I've been washing my celery in baking soda, but I saw on medical medium that it has a negative impact on the liver. I'm not able to buy organic celery. So, okay, cool. That's a very cool question. So the negative impact of baking soda is when you ingest it. That's the issue. So when you're washing your baking, the, the uh, celery in baking soda, it stays in the water. You know, so you, you put the baking soda, I have a video on that one, how to clean off pesticides um, from vegetables or something like that. It's probably the video you saw. Um, Shireen, so when you soak the celery for 15 minutes, this is what it needs to, at least on the outside, it doesn't get the chemicals, you know, the pesticides from the inside. So it's always better to buy organic, don't get me wrong, but sometimes we can't, you know, I'm living in Panama, they're kind of organic, like what? What's that, you know? Um, they also don't, you know, it's not everywhere available. If you soak it for 15 minutes in water, you know, the, the, baking soda, one tablespoon in the water, and then celery in there, leave it for 50 minutes, and then you rinse it off with pure, you know, I mean, as pure as possible with tap water, basically. And then you don't have, you don't ingest the baking soda. Baking soda is uh, not good to take internally. Like, you know, some people like, take one teaspoon of baking soda, it's good for your gut, you know, or against acid reflux or stuff like that. I'm like, ah, it's the worst thing ever, you know, because it dilutes, it, it basically kills your good stomach acid, which you need for digesting food and it makes bacteria um, so much more easy to enter deeper into the body from the, from the stomach. Uh, because there's a reason why the stomach is acidic. It's a, there's a reason for it. It's really important that the stomach is acidic and the small intestine, which comes afterwards, is highly alkalizing. And that is the, basically the bacteria killer, you know, for anything that you take from outside. So baking soda internally, bad, but for washing celery, perfect. Good idea. Much better than anything like bleach or uh, vinegar or stuff like that. They actually did really independent studies who would think about that that it it um it cracks the uh, 
the, the how do you say this lining of toxins on the surface of the cell of the of the vegetable it cracks it open after like 10 something minutes and then you can actually wash it off because if you just wash your vegetables with water you don't get this film off so that will help okay let me know if that helps ah uh, steven hello steven nice to see you i mean nice to know you're here <laughs> Steven asked, how can I stop craving for bread? Oh, anybody else here has cravings for bread sometimes? Let me know. Let me know here in the, uh, just say yes me or something like that in the chat. I would love to hear. That's definitely something I'm relating to because I was addicted. Addicted to the yeast bread and the fluffy and the smell, you know, everything. Is there as well. See, you're not alone, uh, Steven. So, yeah, you know, the smell it smells good. It's easy, it's convenient, it's filling. You know, everything about bread is amazing. Katie, Christine, yes, we are, we are talking about the same thing, right? So it's kind of, even when now, you know, I'm not addicted to bread, but even now when somebody else makes the bread, you know, having a friend over or I smell it somewhere in the street, I still love the smell because my nervous system, you know, knows what, you know, how this tastes like and everything. So let's just be honest, you know, bread is a mm, really amazing thing. Um, unfortunately, most of the bread is really, really bad for you because it feeds pathogens, it contains all kinds of chemicals, it has too much, you know, iodized salt and pest, no, no pesticides, um, preservatives, um, yeah, and the gluten, of course, which feeds pathogens. So, you know, it makes you bloated. <laughs> So that's that that part. So as an alternative for bread, I'm always looking for, you know, what is the body craving if you're craving bread? So one thing, Stephen, is that, um, you know, you smell it and you remember it when your grandmother, I'm making stuff up, you know, your grandmother, you were young and your grandma was always making the bread for you. And, you know, in the morning you come out in the kitchen and there's this bread. So that's kind of a positive experience that your nervous system remembers, your, your neuro, your neurological system. That's strong, but that's not enough to get a craving. That's not enough. There is a, a, an emotional or like a mental, you know, like this body mind craving. And then there's a physical craving. So I'm, I'm thinking that you might crave or I'm assuming that there is a physical craving as well. And for the physical craving, you're going to remember that you have certain bacteria in your body. You have good bacteria, make it easy. Good bacteria, bad bacteria. And you have bacteria that helps breaking down certain foods. And there are hundreds and hundreds of different, probably thousands, of different bacteria that break down different foods. So when you have been eating bread for a longer time, longer than one day, you know, in a row, then it will take some time for your microbiome to change to bacteria that doesn't want bread. Because right now, if you're, you're still on the bread vibe, you've been eating bread and the bacteria inside your body, they adjust it. So there are certain bacteria in your, in your body that like bread. When you stop eating bread, those bacteria, they go nuts, just like humans or like a kid or adults. You know, we're like, bread, 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 bread. This is your bacteria. This is the bacteria in your in your intestines. They want the bacteria. They want to die. They don't like celery. They want the bread. They want gluten. You know, um, so this is to keep in mind, and that takes a little bit. It takes a week. It takes two weeks, really, to get off that craving to not eat it at all. This is, for example, why it doesn't work if you just, for most people, me included, doesn't work if you just occasionally eat the naughty bread you know like the gluten bread just okay just once a week or stuff like that first of all the gluten stays um not the gluten itself but the 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 parts of the gluten you know that feed the pathogens they stay longer in your system in your lymphatic system in your bloodstream for up to two weeks so that's how long you're feeding even if you just eat one piece of toast bad toast um so that's one part and the other part is really um the bacteria itself you know that they are kind of every time you nurture them more and they get louder so um that one it's better for you if you make low gluten flour bread and well um so with the whole bread thing I'll, I'll show you something so because i like the crunchy thing you know so i got something it's probably not available in your country because i haven't seen it anywhere else so this stuff here you see this this is yucca this is a root vegetable. You can see it. Gluten-free. It says it on the label. Peggy is not lying. That's gluten-free cassava flour. And it, there's not even salt in it. It's nothing else. It's just, cooked, sorry, it's just cooked cassava flour. Really good alternative. 
Um, you can also make your bread yourself with oats and quinoa and buckwheat, which is, has nothing to do with normal wheat. That's an option. Or you just find better stuff, you know, find alternatives. Um, in the beginning, it's very hard if you just take away the, the, the bread, you know, then I would rather go for alternatives while you're winding yourself off the, the you know, change the microbiome. And it will not be easy. So, Steve, it's not going to be it's not going to be an easy ride, especially if you're a bread graver, you know, one of that category like myself or was. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. I think there was something else. Hmm. Forgot. There was one more thing that I wanted to mention, but I think it's going to come back. Um, yeah, let me know if that for, for now help. I think I even have a video on that one with the bread. You know, he'll help I'm craving for bread. Or if you just put in gut feelings bread, there should be a video that, that jumps up. Okay, guys, let's do one or two more questions. And then I need some water. Hassan. Okay, let me see. Copy and question. Hassan asks if spirulina powder has fiber. P.S. I have SIBO. So if you have SIBO, um, spirulina will be good, but you're the SIBO saver, if you want to call that, that is celery juice. This is what you want to stick to. Spirulina um, is an algae, so it doesn't have a lot of fiber or no fiber at all. Um, but spirulina powder has, is high in protein. A good protein, good healthy protein, but it's not as easy to be digested if you are a, a SIBO. You know, we're still suffering from, from SIBO. So you want to bring that in. Um, depending on how sensitive you are, and maybe a little bit later in your healing journey, maybe a few weeks after, you know, starting the celery juice, doing cucumber juice like nuts. Um, what you can do if you're very sensitive to fiber, you can bring in the barley grass juice powder that I'm, you know, constantly preaching about, which doesn't contain fiber because it's just the juice. It's the, and it doesn't contain gluten either, just to be clear. Um, that one, you can also find it on my website, the one that I like the most, uh, needs to be organic. Um, best to be in a country that you know is not India or China. Nothing against those countries. Just you know, you, the, the standards are different. There's different standards and a lot of pesticides. So US is good. UK, you know, Europe somewhere there. And barley grass juice powder. This is what you want to do. And spirulina um, might be fine with you. I have SIBO clients, you know, who can do the spirulina no problem. But it might also cause you, you know, bloating in the beginning that you feel worse so go for the celery juice and for more cleansing first before you bring in the spirulina and more you will also have more digestive strength you need more digestive strength for spirulina than you need for barley grass juice powder or celery okay da, da, da. ah here jennifer jennifer i think somebody already said that they like your question was it katie not sure. Okay, last but not least, let me copy paste. Jennifer asks, do you ever suggest any particular tests for adrenal fatigue? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not, because I, I studied medicine for four years, four years, and everybody was nuts about testing, testing. That I did so many tests, you know, I did every, I mean, I did, probably did not every test, but no. Often they give you give you stuff which is really unhealthy. They bring you in an environment which is unhealthy. They disinfect you like crazy. They don't give you answers and you pay for it. No, definitely not. Adrenal fatigue, you can, it's easy to understand. So if you're somebody who has a high stress level, it's likely that you are addicted to adrenaline, to your own adrenaline. Um, that's what adrenal fatigue really is about. You know, first we get... We have so much stress, may it be emotional, physical, whatever stress in the body. Then the, we live off the credit card. You know, we drink our coffee in the morning, rush to work, those are the overwork ourselves. This is how, um, like, if you ask me, this is how my mother manifested her multiple sclerosis. It's even what she says, that she didn't take care of her body. And uh, adrenal fatigue can also come with injuries, with injuries to the adrenals by medication, uh, through medications. Um, so those are things that adrenal fatigue is really an imbalance in your adrenals. So you want to make sure um, for you, I have videos about that, a lot of them actually, what you can watch, Jennifer, 
um, make sure you get the uh, you watch the videos you get the b12 b12 it's so important for your adrenals this is a this is adrenal lover the adrenals they will they will soak it up they really need this you also need vitamin c and you need zinc to support the immune system and to help the body to not go in that stress response what you want to do city noise what you want to do is you want to snack every one to two hours a little piece of fruit, a little bit of something salty vegetable, like one stalk of celery with half an apple, for example, or a bit of cucumber with a tomato, whatever, something. Um, so the, the your body has enough healthy glucose and I have minerals that the, the adrenals don't go into stress mode because that's what's happening with adrenal fatigue. The adrenals, they are stressed out. They are kind of a shock state. So you want to get out of that shock state and really help the the body to not go into you know low low sugar or low minerals at any time at any time if necessary even eat in the night every uh, intermittent fasting person will be deleting this video right now <laughs> but that's just you know it's a special case okay guys um thank you so much um i hope i answered a few questions i know you have more questions um, I do my best to to help. Uh, if you haven't watched it yet, look, watch the masterclass, watch the gut healing training, where it's very personal. I'm giving you all the gold nuggets that I'm using with my clients, that I'm using with the gut feeders in the academy, like Katie here, who is on the call right now. And yeah, you get everything and you get it for free for an hour. Um, and you can get it on, you can sign up for, the training on my website, PeggyShoma.com, or also I put the link in the description. Okay, lovely beings. Thank you so much for, for joining. I hope this was valuable. If it was, hit that like button and make sure you have that bell turned on to all notifications. So next time the live Q&A comes up, you get notified and you know, whoo, you know, I'm, I'm in. I know when Peggy comes live and you can ask your questions. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Honey Bunny, for you. <laughs> Thank you, Ma... Margaret, yeah, I really, really appreciate your, your thank yous because I'm, I'm putting my, my heart in it and I hope it, it helps. And thank you, Katie, for the... <laughs> Katie loves the Academy. I love having Katie in the Academy. Uh, Shireen, thank you as well. Lukewarm, Stephen, Jennifer, embrace your journey. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, I see you soon and um, have a great afternoon, evening or morning, wherever you are in the world. Bye, guys.